Good morning, everyone. That's good. Everybody's awake, right? And we're brimming with ideas. Yesterday, we covered a wide variety of different things. We talked about a general overview of what's been changed in the OASIS. We talked about the health conditions. We did a deep dive into the skin integrity, pressure ulcers, and injuries. We talked about the quality reporting program resources, and then we took a dive into those reports themselves. So having spent that time yesterday and really invested your energies into the learning process and thinking about the Oasis D, my question to you first this morning is, you've been working with this tool for months now. You did put time and energy into training your staff, put time and energy into thinking about how you yourselves would review and audit this product. And your staff has been using it now for 10 weeks. At your tables, and for those of you online, I would ask you to take a few minutes and think about what went right. Because I know that with the energy in this room and the energy we saw in November, that some things must have gone very well. That you were able to get across to your staff what needed to be and get them to really work on doing the assessments correctly and documenting what they had done. So share with one another over the next five minutes what worked well. What were your teaching strategies? What were your implementation strategies? How did you go about doing it? Large lecture, one-on-one, -on -one, small groups. How did you go about implementing this process? What worked for you? And then take a couple of minutes and think about what is it that I have picked up in the course of yesterday's activities and yesterday's learning, what did I pick up that I need to go back and work on? I heard something in the skin integrity, something Anne said clicked with me, and I need to go back and reteach this piece to my staff. Or when we talked about the health conditions and the falls. I need to go back and look at my adverse events reports and think about how the staff are collecting the information and how that's gonna translate. So let's take, oh, let's take about five minutes for each of those. Five minutes for what worked and five for what didn't. And then Charlotte is gonna go around with the um, microphone for those who would like to share some of the good things that worked really well and what they might take back to your agencies so that you can continue to have positive results and really good data collected. Okay, so I'll be watching five minutes for each of those at your tables. Let's think about what worked and then what we would like to do differently or improve on. Okay, I hate to interrupt all this terrific activity that's going on, but I want to make sure we have enough time to share with one another. Charlotte and Anila, their microphones are going around. Charlotte's going to wave at me if I have somebody contributing from online. So let's start with someone who'd like to share a best practice or an activity that really worked well in training your staff. Oh, we have a volunteer, yay. Good morning, Good everyone. Good morning. Uh, it was really not so much what I learned, uh, yes, but I would like to share that some of our therapists who was doing a great job training the staff uh, suggested that um, when you push, a, a pay, when you're doing a challenged um, testing, that's considered a fall. And yesterday, we learned that it's not considered a fall. So that was a good comment I'd like to make. Good. Very good. And you'll be taking that back. Yes. <laughs> Very good. Does anyone else have something they'd like to share? Something that worked. How did you go about presenting the Oasis D to your staff to make it a learning experience as opposed to an, oh, my God, here we go again? Um, as part of our education, when we went around to the, the team meetings, we, for, especially for the falls, we actually kind of did a little skit. Like, I went to stand up to present, and I stumbled, and I caught myself, and then my partner pushed me to the ground. <laughs> so it really caught their attention that I almost fell, and then that somebody 
thought it was okay to shove me. <laughs> um, but, but then we said to them, you know, did I, did I fall? When I stumbled, did I fall? You know, when, when Larry pushed me, did I fall? And then, you know, so there was yes, no. And I said, well, we'll let's see what Medicare has to say about that. <laughs> um, so getting their attention, but just kind of acting some of this stuff out. Um, and we've done it a couple of times. We have um, skills fairs that we bring them into. And we've done silly videos where we've dressed up as patients and acted cranky and just showed an assessment gone right and an assessment gone wrong. Um, just to keep it not so, so dry. It's, it's really tough material. Um, we are struggling still with the GG questions, but I think things like that, if you can get their attention, make them laugh a little, open their eyes, you know, you bring them in on a rainy Monday morning and expect them to learn Oasis, it's a little tough. <laughs> mm -hmm. so, thank you. I like that idea. Of course, it wouldn't take much to put me over now, would it? <laughs> Unfortunately, when I go out to teach Oasis D, the therapists always want me to be their guinea pig. Can't imagine why. Someone else. No, oh, we have one here in the middle. Good morning. I just wanted to piggyback on um, with uh, having the scenarios and actually admitting a patient because the, the videos tend to, sometimes they won't always capture your attention, even though it's great information. We had to try something interactive. But the other thing that I found was um, if we had staff that they were struggling with specific moo numbers, we actually pulled out the manual because the manual is great in directing, you know, how are you defining chair fast? You know, because we would have people, we would have um, staff that were um, saying someone was independent, but they were chair fast, you know, and then they don't run it to the scrubber because it gives you fatal error. So we would have, you know, simple things like that, but we use the manual because it will define. Another area was um, incontinence. And so um, there was a great definition in the 2019 manual, and so then everyone around the room was like, oh, my God, then I'm incontinent, you know, based on what yeah. the definition was, <laughs> you know. So I think we don't, because the manual is so big, we don't use it as often, but the definitions and defining the criteria is great. So thank you for that. You're welcome. Okay, Charlotte has one from our friends at home. Where is it? Here we go. Um, we have one that says, I did large group teaching and used many examples, which seemed to really help staff to understand the changes, especially GGs, falls, and skin. A second person says, we utilized SurveyMonkey to test staff knowledge. That's a really good idea. I like that one. And a third person says, we followed up large group teaching with the use of the CMS GG scenarios in small groups in mid-January. Very good. Those are all really good ideas. Okay, so the flip side of the coin. From yesterday's programs, what did you pick up on that you had an aha moment? I need to take this back and I need to reteach this or I need to focus on this piece so that I can get the concept across better. Does someone have something they'd like to share about that? How they, what they want to take back to their staff and how they might approach teaching it? Ah, thank you. I love it when people are brave, especially at 8.30 in the morning. <laughs> Coffee, that's my girl. <laughs> Skin, oh, sorry. Basically, it was the height, weight, and the BMI in relation to skin issues. Mm -hmm. um, we run into a lot of issues where patients don't have a scale, or they don't want to get weighed, or they're heavier than what the scale will allow, and, and that kind of thing. And um, where do you get the information? And I think the 30 days previous is going to be helpful. If we have had a weight that was mm -hmm. done by an agency staffer, um, that they can go back to if they can't do it right at that initial visit. So that was helpful. Mm -hmm. We've seen staff really take to the concept of stressing with their patients 
I'm not interested in the number itself. My concern is, did it go up or down? Because that tells me about your health status. So don't focus on the number itself. We're only going to talk about the up and the down. That did seem to strike a chord. Do we have anyone else? Ah, here we go. Brave woman. I think what I am going to take back is the uh, reporting. The um, uh, HHQRP reporting and how to uh, drive down or drill down to the exact issue. The piece that I did not know before was um, how to attach that to the OASIS submission report. So that's something that I've learned yesterday and I'm going to utilize that. Thank you. Good. Very good. Oh, there's another brave person. Yay. Good morning. Um, in, in addition to talking about the reporting, which is great, um, an aha moment for me is that it's not only going to help improving um, patient outcome, but also looking at your policies and evaluating your orientation plan or your training plan, how you're training your staff. Again, so all of that together, it's the bottom line of improving patient outcome. Absolutely. And it really does matter. Your policies themselves need to reflect how you want your staff to conduct their assessments and what is and is not acceptable. And especially with all the confusion and upset over height and weight and the falls, and completing your falls reports for avoidable events, you really need to have clear and specific policy so that that does matter. And I hope that that's something that you will all take away so that you can go back and look at your policies and work on them. Okay, that said, I wish we had more time, but I'm going to turn the podium over to Ann Deutsch so that she can talk about GG and bring us some more clarity on that. 